Well, as people across the country celebrated Australia Day yesterday, police were generally pleased with crowd behaviour. There were also rallies calling for a change of date for Australia Day, with crowds of up to 60,000 attending the Invasion Day rally in Melbourne. To talk about this and other stories of the week, we're joined in Brisbane by Jane Prentice, Assistant Minister for Social Services and Disability, and in the studio with us, Labor MP Emma Hassar joins Good us. Morning. Welcome to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good Emma, morning. we'll start with you because uh, your colleague, Anthony mm. uh, Albanese, uh, made a contribution to the uh, Australia Day debate yesterday yep. when he spoke about, obviously, th this... this uh, movement to change the date. Mm. He came up with an idea of actually uh, having a referendum on January the 26th to address a number of issues. Mm. Just talk us through that idea and, and you think perhaps the merit of that idea Look, or I not. I think uh, you know, Labor has always supported an individual referendum on each of those things because they're both very separate issues and to conflate the two together would not give either of them the respect or p potentially the due diligence that they both deserve. Um, they are both incredibly important issues and they need to stand alone. Um, you know, Anthony's comments... This being both the Republic and yep, the constitutional and the recognition, recognition absolutely. for yeah, yep. uh, Indigenous people. And so we, we've had uh, no successful referendums uh, in this country, I think, over 40 years. So to give it the best chance mm. to, um, to achieve the outcomes that we want to achieve, uh, they need to stand alone. And that's why Labor have supported a separate referenda. I think Anthony's comments yesterday, uh, him simply... Um, you know, contributing to the debate, like all of us will contribute to the debate over the, the coming, you know, five or ten years or however long this takes. Jane, it's a big deal to hold a referendum. Do you think Anthony Albanese is right to want to do these two issues in one? Well, I think he's a bit ahead of himself. First of all, we need to make sure that the Indigenous communities uh, agree on what the change should be. Uh, Australians want to know what they're voting for, and I think that was probably the problem with the last referendum on the Republic monarchy issue. Uh, and we need to make sure uh, what we're actually voting on uh, before we get to that step. So we need the Indigenous people, and I think majority of Australians want to see the Indigenous people recognised in our constitution, but they want to know how it's going to be worded and what it's going to say. So we need to get that right first. So, Jane, you're saying don't confuse that with the issue of this movement to change the date then. Um, no. but, but would you say there's no political will at this point, at least, to change the date, but do you think it's worth visiting, at least debating? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, Changing the date won't change what happened. Uh, there's no point trying to rewrite history. Uh, this is a classic Greens distraction. Uh, as the Indigenous leader said yesterday, changing the date won't make any difference to their health issues, won't improve education for them, uh, won't make one child's future better. Uh, one of the leaders came out last night and said, of those 60,000 people who were involved yesterday, what have they done to help Indigenous people uh, today? And that's what we're about. Is I, I think Australia Day has changed over the years. We don't celebrate uh, what we did 100 years ago. We now celebrate on Australia Day what makes us the best country in the world. What we celebrate is multiculturalism. We celebrate community, bringing people together, making things better. Changing the date doesn't change what's happened. And you only have to look at other key dates. You know, look at Anzac Day. Uh, the Minister for Defence at the time said, I refuse to have Anzac Day celebrated on the 25th of April because of Gallipoli and what happened there. And he said it's, it's wrong that we should have it on a day when we lost so many Australian lives. And yet Charles Bean and others uh, said to him, no, we're not celebrating what happened on the day. We're commemorating what makes the Australian Defence Force so great. And Anzac Day has come to be uh, recognising the strength of our Defence Forces, celebrating comradeship, honour, courage, resilience and all those great characteristics of Australian Defence Force. So just as we're not going to change that date because we don't like what happened on the 25th of April, we shouldn't be changing Australia Day because we don't like what happened uh, back uh, on the 26th of January uh, when Captain Philip arrived. Emma, does Jane have a point there? Look, I think trying to uh, mesh Anzac Day and Australia Day together are uh, absolutely ridiculous. Australia Day is a day that we celebrate in this country and that, you know, there are people that come together in friendship and barbecues and crowd around. There's a, a few beverages had, there's fireworks that go off at the end of the day. That is not what happens on Anzac Day. We are solemn, we are respectful 
respectful, we are reserved, we are remembering, um, and they are two completely different dates. So how you draw those same conclusions, I'm really not sure. Um, and I think that uh, we need to have a calm and respectful and really considered thoughtful thorough debate. Out in Western Sydney where I am, um, largest population of uh, urban Aboriginal people in the country, um, this means something different to each and every one of them. And I think that uh, you know we need to talk about our history and own our history. We can't change it, absolutely not. And those gaps are widening and, and getting greater. And we do need to be focused on those things, um, as Jane right, rightly has pointed out. Yeah, do you think at the very least what this debate has prompted is a greater consciousness among the broader Australian population about Indigenous history. Absolutely, Andrew. So my kids are, you know, going through school. They have uh, very, very seldom heard about actually what happened on the 26th of January. We have this very glossy history that we like to talk about um, and it's only been through discussions with me or discussions a, a little bit broader outside of the curriculum where they've actually learnt about what happened on the 26th of January. Um, I am you know, somebody that uh, is inclusive and I want to see all Australians be able to celebrate Australia Day for everything that we've achieved and all of the great things that we have, but also being respectful and mindful that this is a day that is, is hurtful to some Australians and by acknowledging the past and owning it um, going forward in a way that we don't keep making those same mistakes. Emma, with this momentum building for a change mm. of the date, as you say, that conversation about the real issues faced by uh, mm. some Indigenous Australians happens more now in the recent years. Do you think if the date changed, we wouldn't acknowledge that shared history? history as much and those conversations wouldn't happen as much and is that a good or a bad thing? Look I think it is good because it, it does spur debate, it does uh, uh, make people more alive and aware to the idea of, of what's happening and some of those uh, injustices that are still being faced by Aboriginal communities. Um, I don't think it's the most important thing facing Indigenous communities right now. I think that uh, recognition is one of them and, and closing some of those major gaps is probably really uh, much more important. Jane, let's just move to the, another issue that's uh, been uh, in the news this week, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It appears as though it's back on the agenda despite uh, Donald Trump uh, and what he's had to say in the past, although we've seen him in the past 24 hours uh, at Davos saying, well, you know what, um, trade's not a bad thing between two countries. So do you feel as though uh, perhaps uh, the TPP will be uh, uh, embraced, perhaps even by the Americans again? Well, it's definitely going ahead with 11 partners. Uh, America, of course, is always happy to trade, usually on their terms as an extra rider uh, to their agreements. But it will go ahead and it's going to be of great benefit uh, to Australia. I congratulate uh, the Prime Minister, Julie Bishop and Stephen Shobo, because they have persevered with this uh, at a time when Bill Shorten said it was dead, it would never happen. He actually came out and told us to walk away from negotiations. But the impact of this particular agreement means that 98 per cent of all the uh, levies and imposts uh, with these countries will be, or the uh, embargoes will be reduced. And it means massive uh, export opportunities for so many of our businesses, uh, particularly the sugar people who will be able to export more to Japan, Canada and Mexico. Uh, wine embargoes are coming down. It, it's going to really create more jobs and growth for our economy. Because at the end of the day, it's not the big end of town. Quite often it's the smaller producers who actually benefit from these trade agreements, as well as our service industries. So where we've seen a thousand new jobs a day created over the last 12 months, I think you'll see that even improve more because of the trade agreements that we're negotiating with our neighbours. Emma, as Jane said, at the time the US pulled out of yep. that deal, Bill Shorten said that it should be abandoned. Now that a successful deal has been negotiated, yep. Was he wrong in saying that? Look, I think that you know all the trade deals that we look at or that we consider are all done in detail. At the moment, we don't even know what the name of this is going to be. It's certainly not the TPP because um, all the countries that we originally um, had consulted with and were going to participate with have uh, changed. We are waiting on the detail of this new agreement, which we won't see until around about March. But what will always be at the core of the decisions we make as a, as a Labor Party, as a Labor government, will be what's in the best interest of Australians, uh, what's in the best interest for uh, the jobs for Australians, and how many more small businesses will be created or not created by this, and what's in it for 
everyday, ordinary, working class Australian people. Um, as I say, we don't have the detail. We'll get that around March. Um, it'll come on for debate after it's been significantly vetted through, through the committee process. Um, there's no transparency around this at this stage. And we've asked for independent economic modelling, which is what we did with the original um, version of this. And Jane, we've seen a lot of tennis, of course, uh, recently in Australia, uh, certainly up uh, your part of the world too. It began with the inter with the uh, the Brisbane International. Now, you are, of course, the Assistant Minister for Social Services and Disability Services, and I know you were very impressed by the with the, Brit the Brisbane International of being an inclusive event as far as disabled people are concerned. Yes, the Brisbane International, I congratulate them because they had a come and try day uh, for potential tennis players in wheelchairs and we had over 60 people turn up, which was great. Uh, but this is what we want to see. I think something like 69% of people with disability uh, participate in sport more than once a week. Now that's very important. We always say sport is important for your health and lifestyle and it's not just the elite sportsmen. We want to encourage everyone to get involved and of course today we see Dylan Orcott who's currently our patron for in National Day of People with Disability. He's going to be in the finals and we're all going to be there to cheer him on and wasn't it fabulous to see him actually playing centre court last night on Rod Laver Arena uh, and that's what we need to do is promote uh, the opportunity for all people with disability to get involved in sport and and I know down Emma's Way in Western Sydney, you've got uh, Sean Spence and the Western Tigers who have an inclusive sport program for rugby league out that way. So at this time, with the Winter Paralympics coming up, uh, I want to congratulate all the major sporting groups for providing more inclusivity with their sporting activities. Yeah, so we do have a number of people in our electorate providing, um, you know, inclusive sports, but it's done by on a voluntary basis. It's done by the goodwill of the people in those grassroots organisations. There is something that the Assistant Minister could be doing, um, which is uh, coming a bit closer to what we need in the NDS, which is the National Disability Strategy. Um, of course, including people with disabilities um, in sports brings a whole extra raft of challenges, and some of the things that we need to see are more investment in facilities, uh, in our building code and legislative changes around that. So I think um, whilst I will always support uh, inclusion on every front, I think that as governments we should step away from the, the airy fairy light and fluffy part of this and actually tackle some of the really difficult decisions rather than leaving it up to the NDIS to sort of solve um, some of these issues moving forward. Jane, would you like to respond to that? Well, of course, sport is included. Um, it's not just the 460,000 uh, people who will be covered by NDIS. Uh, it's also the 3.6 uh, million other Australians who identify as living with disability. And the Turnbull government uh, strongly supports inclusive programs, and that's why I mentioned Sean Spence and the Western Tigers. Um, that's why we support uh, the tennis programs. That's why we're supporting Paralympics with the elite sportsmen. But we're also encouraging sporting groups. Um, I know there's a soccer group in my area and a rugby union group who in include everyone, and we're funding those through government programs. Right, Jane Prentice in Brisbane, thank you, and Emma Hassar here in the studio. Thanks, Thanks. very much for Thank you for having us. Pleasure.